Imagine fresh, homegrown vegetables right from your own greenhouse, even in the coldest parts of winter. That's right. On this episode, I'm going to share with you my five strategies for making sure that I create the best, most warm, loving environment for my vegetables so that I can continue to produce 90% of the vegetables that we eat year round. If you're new to this channel, welcome. I'm Randall and I've transformed small urban spaces into abundant gardens that produce most of our vegetables year round, even in the winter. Stick around towards the end when I share with you a special performance hack that I learned for the greenhouse that allows me to make sure that this space is safe and optimal for these vegetables from the luxury and warmth of my home, even when I'm traveling. The first two strategies that I want to share with you are about maximizing warmth. Surprise, surprise, right? One of the most important things. So one of the first things that we're going to do is we're going to alter the settings. We're going to, in my case, in extreme winter, I'm going to turn this fan off so that it doesn't exhaust uh, out and, you know, bring in cold air. I'm going to alter my geothermal settings as well. So I'm going to alter those two settings and then I'm going to turn this on over here. This is connected to this heater. It doesn't run a lot, but when it gets really cold out, it's helpful to have this. It's really cold today. And so you can see that it's maintaining fairly easily uh, 10 degrees Celsius. I use centigrade because it's a little easier for me to understand when it comes to freezing temperatures. Zero degrees Celsius means that you're getting into the danger frost zone. So it's really easy to tell. And I want to stay about 10 centigrade if I can above that at all times to maximize the amount of vegetables that I can grow in here. The second strategy for maximizing the warmth in the greenhouse during the extreme parts of our winters is related to making sure that any areas of the greenhouse that could have air come in, including the louvers behind this fan, which is the reason why I turn it off during the winter. It's not just because I'm not going to be using it. It's because I don't want to accidentally have this fan turn on because I have completely sealed up those louvers behind it so that if the wind blows really hard, even though the louvers are just supposed to let air out, I'm not getting drafts in the greenhouse as well as the intake louvers that open when this turns on in the warmer months, that is sealed up super tight as well. And that is a key strategy to keeping this baby warm. For the third part of the strategy to maximize the greenhouse during the harshest of winter months has to do with light. And so you might notice that these plants aren't quite as intensely grown as I typically do, just meaning I'm not crowding these guys together, which works great, don't get me wrong. Most of the part of the year, that is all the way that I plant because it crowds out weeds, it maximizes the amount of production that I get out of the small space. But in this case, I actually want to give them a little bit of extra room because I'm concerned about them getting further shaded. You might notice that it's not very bright here in the greenhouse as far as like really direct sun. And that's the little thing that kind of, let's just say tricked me, fooled me, but will not fool me again. And that's that we get pretty long days here, even in our winters, nine hours, 30 minutes is usually the, sh the shortest day. I thought things would be okay, but what I'm learning is a lot of these days are gloomy and shady like this, and so I might need to have some supplemental light to really maximize the amount of growth that I can get here in the winter. It's not just enough to insulate and create the warmth and the climate that we need, 
I've also got to think about light. So that's something that I might have to add here. The other thing is the selection of plants. So you notice that I've got lettuce and I've got spinach and kale and beets. These are all vegetables that don't require a lot of intense warmth and light. The fourth important part of the strategy that I want to talk to you about today is about maximizing the water in the greenhouse during the winter. Now you might just think that I'm talking about the amount of water that we water plants, right? That's an important part of gardening, and it certainly is in this case, but I'm also talking about the amount of water in the air, or what most of us know as humidity. Scientifically speaking, relative humidity, right? And so we'll start with the water. What you do, a lot like you do in the cooler months in your garden, at the, either in the beginning of your season or towards the end of the season, you're probably watering less. And that's what we're doing here. So I've dramatically changed the interval and the length at which the drip irrigation system is watering here. And then the few things that I'm hand watering here, like the citrus trees and the garden stalk towers, I'm watching those closely and making sure that I don't overwater them. That's just really as simple as sticking your finger in the soil of those containers. And if it's still moist, don't water it. Now, the other part is that humidity. And a problem that if you live in a cold climate like I do, you probably have a dry problem inside of your house, right? Your heater is running and if it's forced air, forced heat, right? It makes the environment drier and you might even be running a humidifier. In the greenhouse, we've got a lot of plants, we've got soil, we've got light coming in, we've got condensation, we have what's called transpiration where the plants are essentially sweating, right? And so there's a lot of humidity. So one of the challenges that we tend to have in the greenhouse opposite of our homes during the winter is that it gets too humid. And what I was seeing is that this greenhouse was exceeding sometimes 90% humidity levels, and that's just too much. And I'd like to keep it around 80 or 75 max. And of course, you don't want it too dry either. So I simply installed a dehumidifier. And this is the type that has a setting on it, which is really important where you can dial in what you want the maximum humidity to be. And that way it will let it get humid in here and it will only turn on when it starts to get extreme. Otherwise it's not going to run because we do want a little humidity for our plants. For the last strategy of winterizing, keeping this environment the warmest and the best that it can be during the harshest parts of the year, it's something that might surprise you, or at least it did to me, and that's maintenance. And really, it's just inspecting things like, you know, you probably have some kind of panels that might be different than mine, windows, maybe um, seals around doors, just making sure that, you know, literally there's no leaks in the roof. Come out here when it's like really, really bad and there's maybe a lot of wind and snow, and just be quiet and listen. You know, do you hear any creaks? Um, walk around, you know, do you feel any drafts or anything like that? Just make sure everything's okay. Uh, make sure there's no water ingress, you know, somewhere because maybe of the, you know, freezing and thawing. Just little things like that can go a long way to keep something that's actually quite small of a challenge potentially become a really big problem. Related to that is sort of maintenance of your plants. Look at the leaves. Look at not only how they're doing, but get up close to them like you do during the regular months and you know, make sure that you're aware of any pests that might be around or things like that. The other thing you want to do is it amazes me anyway how quickly things get messy and dirty in here. Um, it was just a week or two ago and I can already tell that I need to come through again. There's some plants that are probably spent that I need to take out 
so I don't have a lot of decomposing plant material. Um, there's some, you know, leaves and stuff that have fallen on the floor of the greenhouse, and I can see some behind the beds, the bed that runs around the perimeter of this greenhouse. I get the shop vac out. It's really quick and easy to do, and it goes a long way to making sure that this is the happiest, healthiest, and warm environment for all our vegetables. All right, if you've made it this far, you've made it to the bonus. So this is an interesting one. This little thing here is simply called a temp stick. I'll include the link to it. And all it is, is it's a little device that sits inside of the greenhouse and it measures the temperature and humidity and it sends it up to the cloud. So it stores it somewhere that I can get it either right here on my mobile phone, or I can get it at my computer. So that means I can be warm in the house, bundled up in front of the fire, or I could be on vacation somewhere and I can take a look and see, oh yeah, my greenhouse is doing okay. Or, oh, interesting, that doesn't seem okay. You know, did the heater turn off, right? So it's been very, very huge. The other huge thing about it is because it's constantly collecting this data, I can truly see what changes that I've made or what changes I need to make and how that affects it. So if I make a change, how does it affect the performance of the greenhouse? Not how do I think it does? What does real data say? And so this particular model also has a probe and I put that probe down into the soil in the bed here that runs around the greenhouse. Now that does a couple things. Obviously it tells me the soil temperature, which is very important for growing vegetables. It also tells me though how well or how not so great this battery, if you will, this thermal mass is either storing heat or it's dissipating heat. Right? So in the winter, I really want to see this thing store heat and I want to see that temperature stay steady and then maybe dip down at night because maybe the heat, the little bit that's left is rising from inside of these beds and coming out the exhaust. Right? So I can see that via this little guy, game changer, definitely check it out. All right, with these strategies, your greenhouse should be ready to take whatever winter throws at it. If you want to see how my greenhouse continues to grow during the winter and see how successful or maybe some learnings that I have, definitely hit that subscribe button. Thanks so much for watching. If you're interested in greenhouse growing, definitely check out my other episode where I dive deep into the five lessons that I learned my first year of having a greenhouse. Until next time, happy gardening.